This week's video is all about how to improve your wellness game. So I've got tons of examples of little substitutions you can make to just get you on your wellness track and make you healthier than ever. Hey guys, it's Dr. Mona, and for this week's video, I'm super excited to just share the smallest little changes and little things you can do to improve your wellness game. Little substitutions, some of them have like minimal to no price change, and it can just take you from being okay or bad to really amazing. Let's start with pasta. Pasta is such a great one because this is such an easy staple for dinner, and I feel like, you know, lately, I mean, over the last five, 10 years, everyone thinks pasta is bad, it's got lots of carbs, or, we're just choosing the wrong one. So not all pasta is created equal and there are so many great options these days. I feel like almost every grocery store offers some kind of gluten-free option, some kind of high protein option. So the first thing I want you to look for is definitely gluten-free and that gives you a whole range of pasta. But if you wanna even take it one step higher, I would say to go for some kind of high protein pasta. So that could be edamame, black bean, lentil. This one is a mix of lentil and quinoa. So here are just two comparisons. I purposely picked this one to compare for you guys because it's got really beautiful packaging. It says spinach and chive. And sometimes when you see something, this can go for chips too. When it says spinach or any kind of veggie, you think, oh, it must be made from spinach. It must be really healthy. But don't be fooled because oftentimes all that means is that it's infused with a little bit of spinach. Just because pasta has a little spinach in it doesn't make it super healthy. It's like, let's take a cupcake and put a little bit of spinach in it. Does that make the cupcake healthy? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> so this one is made with wheat flour, dehydrated onion, spinach powder, dried egg, natural flavors. And whenever you see natural flavors, beware, because that can just cover so many things. I feel like that should be a video on its own of what can go into natural flavors. But yeah, not so healthy. Nothing against Trader Joe's. And then we've got this pow pasta, which is literally just red lentil flour and organic quinoa flour. So it's basically like you're eating lentils and quinoa. It's such an easy switch. Let's look at the comparison. This has got eight grams of protein. This has got 14 grams of protein. This has got one gram of fat, one gram of fat. Really, it's just the protein and quality we're looking for. The next thing, this is my absolute favorite one, is cocoa and cacao. I love sharing this tip because I'm so passionate about cacao and I think a lot of people, or not enough people know about how crazy healthy this is. Cacao and cocoa both come from the same place. They come from a cacao tree and this is where chocolate originates from. So it's what happens when you take it from that tree and put it into these packages that just makes a world of difference. Basically, cacao is one of the highest antioxidant foods on the planet. It is so good for you. I think it has something like 40% more antioxidants than blueberries. We all know how healthy blueberries are. It naturally has no sugar, zero grams of sugar, because chocolate on its own, when it comes from the tree, is actually unsweetened. It's amazing for your skin. It's amazing for your energy. It can lower your blood pressure. It's just so many great things, so many antioxidants. It can prevent heart disease. It can improve sleep. So many great benefits. Like you can add cacao to everything. I'd recommend it. Like throw a little bit of raw cacao in oatmeal, throw it in a smoothie, throw it. I put it in quinoa in the morning and make my like chocolate breakfast quinoa. It's just great for you. Then then we've got cocoa and it just goes through so much processing. First of all, there's two types. I think I picked an unsweetened one because I was trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes it can be sweetened, like this is cocoa that you'd use to make hot chocolate or whatever. So it's got additives and sweeteners and dairy. Let's say we just take normal cocoa that's unsweetened and nothing added still not good for you because it's been so processed to get here that you're losing all of the amazing benefits that comes from cacao. And I think that it's, you know, it's probably, it is a little bit more, more expensive to get cacao, but not by much. And I think we just didn't know. Back in the day when we'd make hot chocolate, we would use cocoa and just, you know, mix it with some kind of dairy milk. There's just so many better options now. So when you're making treats for your kids, when you are making treats for yourself, for work, whatever you're using, hot chocolate, definitely switch to cacao from cocoa and you'll just see amazing benefits. Let's do the couscous one. I like this one too. So I feel like couscous has a pretty like healthy reputation. Um, it's like a little more fancy than rice. It's a little fun, but the problem with couscous is that it's literally wheat flour. Like it's made from pure wheat and we all know that gluten isn't the best thing. I always say with gluten, even if you don't have celiac, even if you aren't, you don't know that you're gluten intolerant. Maybe you don't even know if you react to it well, still try to avoid it because there are zero benefits to gluten, not one. So you might not even know that you're intolerant to it. You have some kind of sensitivity. If you ever feel 
fatigued, if you ever feel bloated, if you ever feel just like your energy's a little bit lower, you could have a gluten sensitivity. So try to avoid it, just see if you feel better. Quinoa is an amazing substitution. It's full of protein, it's full of fiber, really healthy. It's still a grain, so it's really filling. You can eat it cold, warm, kind of similar to couscous. You could like put it in a salad. It's just a really, really easy substitution here too. The next example is table salt versus some kind of sea salt, like Himalayan or Celtic sea salt. The funny thing was, I don't even have table salt in my house. So I tried to go out and buy some just for the sake of this video, and I actually couldn't even find any at Trader Joe's. So maybe people are catching on to this trend of how bad it is for you. I just found some onion salt, which uses like regular table salt in it. So this was the best example I could give. What's funny is I feel like we also learn that salt is bad for you. You should avoid salty foods, but actual sea salt, Himalayan salt, Celtic sea salt has so many great health benefits. And if you use it in moderation, it's actually really good for you. Water follows salt, which is why when you eat salty things um, or when salt is used as a preservative in canned foods, in some frozen meals and pickled vegetables, water follows salt. It's just the rules of osmosis. So you tend to get bloated. So if you eat like a ramen soup or some kind of like soup, because soup tends to have a lot of sodium. If you eat it the night before, you might wake up with like a puffy face or your stomach might feel really bloated. So I think salt for that reason people know to avoid like I said if you had some sea salt once in a while It's actually really good for maintaining your fluids because the same way that water follows salt You actually need some sort of fluid balance that can regulate your blood pressure It can affect your mood It can actually help your digestion and even with your digestion It can help how you absorb other minerals and nutrients So if you were to completely have no salt in your diet, it'd actually be unhealthy my suggestion to you never ever use table salt so salt in its natural form actually has so many minerals, um, so many nutrients, it's so good for you. But when you have table salt, not only is it heated at a really high temperature, which basically strips it of all of its health benefits, then there's tons of additives added in. I mean, anywhere from anti-caking things to make sure it doesn't like clump up, which is, you know, just another unnatural thing to make you ha happier and think it looks nicer. It can have aluminum, it can have MSG. There's just so many things that you don't know that go into it. So stick to, Celtic sea salt, Himalayan sea salt, um, it's prettier, it's fancier, it tastes better, and you'll be better off. Let's go to agave. So agave kind of had this like really interesting marketing health kick where everyone was like, agave so healthy, whatever, and like you'd see agave. I feel like even at bars you'll see like agave uh, margaritas and you just like automatically think it's healthier. But what people learned, and if you research this, you'll see it's like very well known now that it's actually not that healthy for you. So naturally occurring agave juice does have health benefits. So that's where this thought process came from. But by the time, it, of course, we process it and strip it down, this agave that you're actually getting as a sweetener has so much fructose, probably the highest fructose than any other commercial sweetener that you can get. So it's really not that healthy. Something like coconut nectar, which I feel like not enough people know about, coconut nectar is so amazing. It's the lowest glycemic index of any of these sweeteners like honey, maple syrup, and glycemic index is something you always wanna pay attention to when you're looking at any kind of sugar that you're consuming. So what it tells you is how quickly your blood sugar spikes. We don't want your blood sugar to spike up fast. So when something has a lower glycemic index and it spikes up slower, that's better. So coconut nectar has the lowest glycemic index. It actually has a lot of nutritional value kind of tastes a little bit like honey, which I feel like agave tastes like too. Try coconut nectar, amazing substitution, especially good when you're baking or cooking, things like that that just need a sweetener you won't even notice it in. So definitely switch these out. So next we've got yogurt versus chia seeds. And I don't just mean like dry chia seeds, I mean chia seed pudding. So I feel like yogurt, some people think is a healthy snack because of the protein and the calcium, which just, it upsets me, but um, I tried to get like the healthiest yogurt because I'm trying to be like, give you like everything. I give the benefit of the doubt of the unhealthy products. This is just like a Greek yogurt, 0%. Even if it has no sugar, actually, this is unsweetened. It still has seven grams of sugar. But what I'm talking about is the dairy content here. For anyone that's still consuming dairy, I highly recommend, even if you don't wanna go vegan, you don't wanna go vegetarian, dairy is so bad for you. If you're worried about calcium, I promise you, there are way better sources of calcium, dark leafy greens, broccoli, any kind of cruciferous vegetable, a calcium supplement, the risk versus benefits just so much better. Whereas chia seed pudding, which 
I, I did this substitution because I think that these are both just like little snacks you could take with you for lunch. If you watch the video I put up recently called my seven healthy snacks in the go, I teach you exactly how to make chia seed pudding. Literally takes 10 minutes to prepare, then you just stick it in the fridge. I did this comparison, like I said, because you can just take these with you to school or to work or whatever, and it's so much easier. So let's just compare the two. Terrible for your skin, great for your skin. Like it's just, that's if, you, if you're thinking about skincare, that's another easy way to look at it. Great fiber, great protein, and let's see, two tablespoons of this, which is one serving, is 15% of your calcium versus one serving of this, which is 20% of your calcium. So do you really need that extra 5%? It's not that important. This is a really like no-brainer switch. The next thing I want to talk about is cinnamon. So if you follow any of my content, you know that I am absolutely obsessed with cinnamon. I love it because it adds flavor, it adds kind of a sweetness, but no sugar, and it actually regulates your blood sugar. So I love recommending anyone who's pre-diabetic. So like if you have your parents or grandparents who might be pre-diabetic, just like throw cinnamon in their food wherever you can. I put it in my coffee, I put it in my tea, but you know, there are different kinds of cinnamon and this is a, another like really easy switch you can make that will really help your health benefits. So we've got regular ground cinnamon and then we've got Ceylon cinnamon. So if you just go and get regular cinnamon, typically this is called cassia cinnamon, but some, if it doesn't say it, just know that it's not Ceylon because Ceylon cinnamon is more expensive and they'll want to brag about the fact that it is Ceylon. So we'll always say it on here. And of course you could just look on the back. So this kind of cinnamon, the cassia tends to have more cumarin and this ingredient can cause liver damage, which is why of course, if everyone's recommending for you to eat a bunch of cinnamon, you don't want to risk liver damage. So all in all, this is just a higher quality cinnamon and it is found pretty regularly at any health store. Um, you could find it on Amazon. So another just like a little easy fix to help you guys um, just increase your wellness game. Okay, love this tip. I feel like I said that about all of them, but this is really my favorite one. So this is just an example of like some green tea or iced tea that you could find, like whether it's like Lipton's or any other brand. I tried to even find, again, an unsweetened healthy one. This one's like blueberry pomegranate or any juice. Anytime you want something besides water, because I understand that you can't just drink water all day, that obviously gets boring and sometimes you just want a little flavor. I highly, highly recommend taking any kind of green tea bag or white tea. You could even get these that are naturally flavored with like monk fruit or like fruit additives. Literally just take the tea bag and put it into a water bottle with some ice and shake it up. And you have this like delicious, refreshing drink. It's so easy. like. If you brew it first, it's a little healthier, but you don't have to worry about it. You're actually still getting a lot of the tea benefits from this. Stick it in here, you put in some water and ice, shake it up, in two minutes, you're like done with an amazing refreshing drink. Versus buying something that's bottled, and you have to think, if something's okay off the shelf, you know, not or on the shelf, not in a refrigerator for that long, it can't be that good for you. Like what else is going into it to make it last so long? Like if I took this and just left it on my counter for two days, I it wouldn't be good. So let's compare. This is literally just an organic fresh tea bag. And this is pure green tea and green tea leaves, natural blueberry and natural pomegranate flavors. Like I said, that's always a little bit vague. You don't really know what goes into it. It's got malic acid. It's just not as natural. And this is also like the healthiest example ever. You could use this in replacement of any kind of juice, any kind of sugary tea, um, soda, whatever. It's so yummy, it's so refreshing, especially with summer coming up, just stick some ice cubes in there. And honestly, I posted this on Instagram and so many people are like reposting it in their stories and loving it. Cause you would never think something so simple could just taste that good, but it actually does. All right, the next one is sugar. I feel like I really don't need to go into why sugar is bad for you. I'm pretty sure most people know how bad it is. I mean, increases diabetes, increases obesity. Sugar is something called an empty calorie, meaning it's calories without any benefit. So you want your calories to have high macronutrients, so either protein, carbs, or fat, because the whole point of food is to actually sustain you and give you energy and give you life. But sugar literally does nothing. It's just calories and it's just bringing you down. It's bad for your skin. Um, it can lead to so many different diseases. So we're always trying to find different ways to substitute sugar. I love stevia. I just want you to know, I didn't like stevia at first. I always tell people it's possible to train your taste buds. So some things that you don't like, if you just slowly start getting used to, you can like. If I were to just like take a little taste of stevia on its own, it's a little bit bitter. So you don't want to do that. But if you mix it into like an oatmeal, into cookies, 
stevia in the raw organic stevia is the only like powdered sweetener that i ever use or i'd recommend you know liquid like i said um coconut nectar is great too the other good thing about this it is a little more expensive for sure but the comparison of what you'd have to use is so much less i feel like it's like maybe a fourth a teaspoon for like a cup or two cup please stop using sugar if you can switch to a liquid in any kind of recipe use coconut nectar even like an organic maple syrup would be fine, but stevia is the best one. It has no sugar, so it's just a sweetener with no sugar. The brand that I get, any kind, it's just organic stevia, and the raw is one that I like, as long as it's not mixed with other things. There is one that's called Truvia that some people ask me about. Truvia has some other things mixed in it, so just stick to plain raw stevia. And the last one I have is Manuka honey. I don't have regular honey because we forgot to get it for this video, but maybe I'll pop up a little photo of it right now. So Manuka honey is just kind of the same theme as what we've been talking about. It's less processed, it's more in its natural state. So honey in general has a lot of antibacterial properties. That's my favorite thing with honey, which is why when you're sick, like having some warm lemon water with a little bit of honey is so great. You can help naturally fight infection. Manuka honey is just in its purest form. It hasn't been pasteurized. It hasn't been heated to kill off any of the nutrients in it. Also, a lot of times the Manuka honey will have the UMF factor on it, and that just kind of shows its antibacterial activity. So the higher the number, the more antibacterial activity it has. It is more expensive, but if you're gonna have something, do it right. You know, you read about all these great health benefits of honey or even like, you know, some kind of sweetener, and then you get it and you're getting it so stripped down, so processed that you're not even getting any of the benefits, but you're getting the sugar. I don't want you to have false thoughts that something is really healthy when it's not. So Manuka honey, a better way to go. These are just little things you can do to switch out. Um, most of them you won't even notice. Some of them you will, but you can just kind of slowly transition. If you have any questions on these, you can leave them below. I'll try to link all these products. Honestly, you could find almost all of them, I'm sure in your grocery store, or I'll put like some kind of online link that'll make it easy for you to get it delivered to your house. I hope this video was helpful. It was a little longer than usual. Let me know if you like that, if you like these longer form videos, or if you want like quick videos, you know, under 10 minutes. Um, if you did like it, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. I typed in sugar, and it first thing came up was sugar daddy <laughs> on Google. That's like the most searched thing. So crazy, history. huh? It knows your it's not my history. <laughs>